bending is a manufacturing process that produces a V-shape, U-shape or channel shape along a straight axis in ductile materials, most commonly metals. Commonly used equipment include box and pan brakes, brake presses and other specialized machine presses in industrial applications and handmade hydraulically actuated or manually operated presses in home use. Typical products that are made like this are boxes such as electrical enclosures and rectangular ductwork. In press brake forming, a workpiece is positioned over the die block and the die block presses the sheet to form a shape, usually bending as to overcome both tensile stresses and compressive stresses. When bending is done, the residual stress causes the metal to spin back toward its original position, so the, the metal must be overbent to achieve a proper bend angle. The amount of spin back is dependent on the material and the type of forming. For example, when sheet metal is bent, it stretches in length. The bend reduction is the amount the sheet metal will stretch when bent as measured from the outside edge of the bend. The bend radius refers to the inside radius. The formed bend radius is dependent upon the dies used, the material properties and the material thickness. Hello hello reviewers, welcome back to our channel. Today we have brought to you metal bender design ideas. This video contains a collection of tested and widely adopted metal bender design ideas which you can copy and make your own device at home. Watch the video until then to never miss a thing and choose an inspiring design for your next project. You can even turn these plants or designs into a lucrative small-scale manufacturing business with a small initial investment on basic tools and materials. If you are new to the channel and if you like what you see, please consider subscribing to our channel and smash the notification bell so that you'll be the first one to be notified when we upload new videos. If you are already a subscribed member, please like and share this video so that it could reach a wide range of audience. Before steel came into general use during the later part of the 19th century, curved structures were frequently constructed from iron, which is cast in liquid form in a curved profile or built up from wrought iron components either with shaped web plates or in the form of lattice stresses. Because wrought iron was very soft, blacksmiths could curve small components by hot forging. During the 20th century, rolled steel joints were curved by metal benders for use as colliery arches to support underground workings. Hydraulic presses were used initially to curve the joints, but eventually three roll bending machines were introduced for bending metal. Because joints have very thick webs, they are not susceptible to buckling during the bending operation. Metal benders were also used in the fabrication of sheep hulls. As early as 1910, bending equipment incorporating rollers was used to curve bulb flats, bulb angles, and tees for marine use. During the period from 1930 to 1950, small curved steel components were also used in relatively simple building structures. From the late 1940s, universal beams or eye sections with parallel flanges came into general use. These parallel flange sections, which had relatively thin webs in comparison with the joists, were difficult to curve about the major axis because the force needed to bend a complete beam was actually greater than that which caused local buckling of the web. In the mid-1970s, steel bending companies produced bending machines with additional rolls to support the web were introduced. 
This development allowed Steel vendors to curve large universal beams about the major axis economically and accurately and had a significant influence on the design of curved steel structures and metal bending became a common feature in the construction industry. Over the course of time, induction bending, a hard bending process that was developed originally for bending presses, pipe work has also been adapted to suit the needs of structural steel work. When we look at sheet metal work or sheet metal bending, there are three basic types of bending on a press break. H is defined by the relationship of the end tool position to the thickness of the material. These three are air bending, bottoming, and coning. Coining. The configuration of the tools for these three types of bending are nearly identical. A die with a long rail form, tool with radius tip that locates the inside profile of the bend is called a punch. Punches are usually attached to the ram of the machine by clumps and move to produce the bending force. A die with a long rail form tool that has a concave or V-shaped lengthwise channel that locate the outside profile of the form is called a die. Dies are usually stationary and located under the material on the bend of the machine. On the bed of the machine. Note that some locations do not differentiate between the two different kinds of dice, punches and dice. The other types of bending listed use a specially designed tools or machines to perform the work. Now let's have a look at some of these bending techniques. Air bending. This bending method forms the material by pressing a punch into the material, forcing it into a bottom V die, which is mounted on the press. The punch forms the bend so that the distance between the punch and the side wall of the V is greater than the material thickness T. Is a V shape or square opening may be used in the bottom die. Because it requires less bend force, air bending tends to use smaller tools than other methods. Some of the newer bottom tools are adjustable, so by using a single set of top and bottom tools and varying press stroke depths, different profiles and products can be produced. Different materials and thicknesses can be bent in varying bend angles, adding the advantage of flexibility to air bending. This, uh, there are also fewer tool chains, thus higher productivity. A disadvantage of air bending is that because the sheet doesn't not stay in full contact with the dice, it is not as precise as some other methods, and the stroke depths must be kept very accurate. Variations in the thickness of the material and the wear on the tools can result in defects in parts produced. Thus, the use of adequate process models is important. Depending on the material properties, the sheet may be overbent to compensate for spring back. Air bending does not require the bottom tool to have the same radius as the punch. Bend radius is determined by material elasticity rather than tool shape. The flexibility and relatively low tonnage required by air bending are helping to make it a popular choice. Quality problems associated with this method are countered by angular measure measuring systems clumps and crowning systems adjustable along the X and Y axis and wheel resistance tools. The second type of technique is bottoming. In bottoming, the sheet is forced against the V opening in the bottom tool. U-shaped openings cannot be used space is left between the sheet and the bottom of the V opening. The optimum width of the V opening is 6 times T, where T stands for material thickness for sheets about 3 mm thick, up to 12 T for 12 mm thick sheets. 
The bending radius must be at least 0.8 times thickness to 2 times thickness for sheet steel. Larger bend radii require about the same force for bottoming as they do for air bending. However, smaller radii require greater force up to 5 times as much than air bending. Advantages of bottoming include greater accuracy and less spring back. A disadvantage is that a different tool set is needed for each bend angle, sheet thickness, and material. In general, air bending is the preferred technique. Conning. In conning, the top tool forces the material into the bottom die with 5 to 30 times the force of the air bending, causing permanent deformation through the sheet. There is little if any spring back. Conning can produce an inside radius of slower 0.4 times the thickness of the material with a 5T width of the V opening. While conning can attain high precision, higher costs mean it is not often used. Three-point bending. Three-point bending is a newer process that uses a die with an adjustable height bottom tool moved by a servo motor or manually for smaller pieces. The height can be set within 0.01 mm. Adjustments between the ram and the upper tool are made by using a hydraulic cushion which accommodates deviations in sheet thickness. Three-point bending can achieve bend angles with 0.25 degree precision. While three-point bending permits high flexibility and precision, it also entails high cost and there are fewer tools readily available. It is being used mostly in high-value niche markets. As you can see in the video, we have compiled a number of interesting metal vendor design ideas for your inspiration. Which one is your favorite and why? Let us know in the comment section. By now you know that our channel is full of inspiring videos which you can use in your project from time to time. If you like our content, please consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already and also smash the notification bell so that you'll be the first one to be notified when you upload new videos. Thank you for watching until the end. We look forward to seeing you in our next video. Until then, stay safe and stay blessed.